All right, guys. Hey, first, I just want to say thank you for my dad, myself, and our whole family for coming to this. This was it's humbling to see everybody that's kind of loved us and been a part of our lives for so long. So um, thank you guys for coming to celebrate my mom. Um, if you guys want to uh, stand with us, we're going to sing a couple of songs uh, first and then we'll get this going.
Let me echo Alex's comments and say just a big thank you for everybody who has come and wants to share in Roslyn's life celebration. Um, Ros was someone special. If you had a chance to know her, uh, you would have completely agreed. When I say she was the sweetest person that I ever knew, I know many of you could say the same thing about your wives, sisters, and mothers. Um, but without exaggerating, Roz really was the sweetest girl I ever knew. Sweetest person for that matter. I'm sure, I'm sure you'll hear more of that as we go forward today. Roz was raised in church from an early age. She came to know the Lord probably, I think, about seven years old. Um, she asked the Lord in her heart. And she came to love the Bible, the Word of God. She loved it so much she ended up going to Bible college for four years and got a degree in biblical education. She had a lot of scholarships. She could have gone anywhere. <laughs> and to honor her, I just wanted to share a few of the scriptures that she treasured and loved. Just a few of them because otherwise it would be a mighty long celebration. Uh, Proverbs 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Psalm 56.8 says, you keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. We shed a lot of tears. Psalm 91, 2 says, I will say to the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And Isaiah 40, verse 6 says, All flesh is grass, and all of its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. In Philippians 1, 6, the Apostle Paul states, For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. And in Philippians 2, 3, it says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for your own interest, but for the interest of others. And God certainly did that. In Psalm 46, 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in time of need. And also Psalm 119 says, 105 says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In 2 Corinthians, this was the first that Ross actually had inscribed on one of her uh, Bible college yearbooks. It says, 1 Corinthians 3, 5 says, not that we are adequate in ourselves so as to consider anything is coming from ourselves, but our adequacy is from God, who also made us adequate as servants of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. In John 10, 14, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And in John 11, 25, Jesus said to a woman, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. That's good news. 
in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, it's a great verse, it says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, nor have it, has it entered into the heart of man all the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. These are some of the verses Roz made. Yes, Roz loved reading and studying the Bible her whole life, literally. It was a source of faith, uh, faith and strength. Now I want to share a few precious comments from Roz's junior high and high school yearbooks. Um, it's clear she was just as sweet back then as she was throughout her whole life. I will say this, if, if these comments were from my yearbooks from junior high and high school, I couldn't read any of them. <laughs> <laughs> probably rated R or something. They all be white. <laughs> Let me start with 1967. Medellin Junior High, eighth grade. I'll just read a couple. I have three manuals. I'm going to read just a couple. To a truly brilliant girl, and not bad looking either. <laughs> good luck with, uh, with uh, good luck with college in the future. And it says Philly or Phyllis. I can't tell. It could be a guy or a girl. I'm thinking if it was a girl, she's probably jealous. <laughs> Rosalind, it's really been great knowing you this year. You are really one of the smartest, nicest, cutest girls I know. Believe me, it's hard to get that combination. Love you, Cece. <laughs> And this one says, Roz, to a Dean's List Award winner each and every year, exclamation, keep the good work up, and I know that you'll have a head for a scholarship. Love you always, Betty. That was sweet. Mm -hmm. Then in 1968, she's in ninth grade. Roz, to a real great, smart, and nice person, hope you have the best luck in everything you do. I sure will miss you, especially when we have a test. <laughs> Stay as sweet and as smart as you are. Love, Pam. I think there was more than a few people that cheated on Roz's papers. <laughs> I don't think she cared. I love this one. Roz, smart, listen, smart people make me feel bad, but around you, I don't feel uncomfortable. <laughs> You're a sweet girl. Stay that way. Good luck. Love you, Leah. <laughs> This is classic. Roz, you are one of the sweetest and nicest girls I have ever met. And I say this from the bottom of my heart. You will ever be remembered by me, at least. <laughs> Good luck next year, Bill. I don't think Bill got a date with Roz. <laughs> and then one more from this one says, I wish I could have sat near you because I need help in algebra. Hope you have a happy summer, Bob. <laughs> And then I'm just going to read a couple from her high school. This is 10th grade in St. Pete uh, High. This is 1969, a year of a lot of events happened that year. Roz, you had great parties. You are a fantabulous person. See you at ranch this summer. Love, Julia. That's the uh, youth ranch that they all went to. Roz, you're a really great girl, always sparkling, full of personality. You've got the nicest disposition of any girl I know. Remember all the great time we had in French class. Love you, Don. That was just a sweet one. That, I, I could go on. Look at all these. These are all saying how sweet she is. But there's um, just two more. To a real sweet girl who is a lot of help in geometry from Phil. <laughs> and then one more. Roz. It's been four fantastic years now. You've been a great friend and a wonderful person to, to know. A lot of things go in to make a person, and you're, you've been blessed with some of the best qualities a girl can have. Thanks for the fun times we had at your parties. My wife was a party. <laughs> Good luck in everything you do. God bless and guide you now and through the years to come. Love you like a sister, Sue. There's a lot more than that, but that's the life we celebrate today. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ramona. I'm 
one of Roz's sisters. I'm the third in the birth, birth order. Roz is the oldest, but she always used to tease me, always on my birthday. She would post on Facebook, happy 65th birthday. From the time I was about 50. So she always wanted to pretend that I was the oldest. Hey, I'm pretty sure, Dave, that the Julie who wrote that comment about see you at ranch is actually here, Julie Upman. Julie, did you go to school? I'm looking for her. Julie, did you go to high school with Rosalind? But not to ranch. Okay, not the right Julie, but Julie went to high school with Rosalind. So thanks for coming today. So a year and a half ago, during a particularly hard season when she was not feeling well at all, Rosalind did something classically Ros. As we all know, she was a very intentional person. And during this season, when thinking about her life and her death, she sat down and sketched out a plan for this service. She said, if you choose to have one, which is also classically Roz, because she really didn't care. But she said, if you do have a service, here are some songs I'd like to sing. We're singing those songs. Please don't fix any food. Whatever you get, just buy it because it's too much work to ask someone to do. And if you do get food, all I ask is that you have at least have a rum cake from Masaros. <laughs> it was her favorite, and today we'll be having rum cake from Masaros after the service. Besides those instructions, she also gave some talking points that she wanted to share with you today. So what is being shared are those talking points and some additional thoughts from her emails and text messages that she sent over the last few years. She wanted to make much of God. She did not want much made of her, even though she was an incredible daughter, sister, wife, mother, grandmother, aunt, niece, cousin, employee, and friend. Instead, she would want others to know God as she had found him to be faithful, her comfort, her peace, her strength, and her ever-present help in time of trouble. So these are Rosalind's words. She wrote, here are some points as far as my understanding of how I stand in Christ, just the truth I'd like incorporated in a talk. I'm not a saint, and I want Christ to be magnified, not Ross. Everything I needed to know to live the Christian life, I learned as a preschooler. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Anything good I've done in my life, the glory must always go back to Christ, because in my own state, I'm a mess. He is the one who brought conviction and the power to walk where the Holy Spirit led me every day. That was very complicated sometimes especially since my MS diagnosis over 20 years ago. The disease scared me, but eventually the Lord changed my attitude about the disease and I received great freedom. When I got old, if a symptom flared up and my doctors needed another test or referred me to another specialist, a doctor's game of pass the buck. The Lord had freed me from any fear of procedure, test, etc because the so, what's the so-called worst case scenario? Renee taught me this. Worst case, I could die. And to me, that was not a worst thing. I love my family and friends, but I've expressed this, this to them and they all understand when, what I mean when I say this. It is better to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Apart from the Lord, there is no solution, there is no hope. Yet I know he is always with me. And even though I can't sing songs that comfort me because of the pain it causes, I can hum them. So that's what I'm doing. I've always found great comfort in the attribute of God. He is a consuming fire. Through sickness or other trial, that is what he's been doing. He is refining me. I love the hymn, How Firm a Foundation. The verse, when through fiery trials thy pathways shall be, my grace all-sufficient shall be thy supply. The flame will not hurt thee, I only design. Thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine is very meaningful to me. That is what God is doing in me. 
I am not now finding great comfort in the message of the book, The Prisoner in the Third Cell. Jesus' word to John the Baptist when he had doubts and questions about Jesus describes my situation. Jesus sent a message to John the Baptist. Blessed are those who are not offended because of me. I will not be offended by God. I refuse to be offended by God. If John the Baptist questioned and Jesus questioned the Father before going to the cross, it's okay to question. Then rest until the answer comes. But I will not be offended by the circumstances of my life. If I only trust God when I understand his ways, what good is that? True faith and wisdom grows when I trust him, even though I don't understand his ways. And that's where I'm living now. I'm thankful for the prayers. They are great encouragement to me. My hope is in the Lord, in the knowledge that I am his, and he is mine, and in the prayers of his people. I love my sisters and their families. Somebody always took up the slack when I couldn't care for myself or needed any help. I'm thankful for the friends who became my legs and accomplished for me what I couldn't. My love to Dave, who for 40 years, P.S. longer if I live till next July, which she did, so 41 years, he has been my stronghold and my love. He was there to hear my woes and to pray with me for when, and to pray for me when I was undone, in pain or tired. I always felt at peace after he prayed for me. He didn't run away from issues that my MS presented. He helped me figure out what needed to be done. And he never complained about all the extra responsibilities he had to take on as my illness progressed. Alec was a wonderful son, and I love seeing the Lord develop Alec's life in him. When the Lord led him to Molly, we were overjoyed. For she was not only, as the scripture says, a wife that should be a good thing, but she was a great thing. Plus, we received a whole group of friends in Alec's in-laws. <laughs> How do I feel about Molly and Alec? Like John said, I have no greater joy than to see that my children walk in truth. Ewan, the puzzle master, beautiful, spunky Isla, and Callum, the peace child, he came to make peace between Isla and Ewan. <laughs> you are all bright stars in my life who bring me joy and make me smile. Precious children whose parents will bring them up in the way of the Lord. Well, that's the gist, she writes. <laughs> Since I won't be there, you have my permission to show photos. <laughs> if you can find any. <laughs> Where did we find them? We found lots of them. You and Rosalind's oldest grandson recently shared his sadness with an adult cousin. He said he was sad about his grandmother because she was his favorite kind of person. And I think that perfectly sums up how we all feel. Roz was all of our favorite kind of person. She, there was no pretense with Roz. There was no guile. She was smart and funny and generous. And more than anything, she loved Jesus. And she pointed us all to him. Her life could be characterized as a long obedience in the same direction. So what do we do? How do we live with this huge hole that she leaves in all us? I think this passage perfectly summarizes her life on earth, but it also gives us encouragement to carry on the daughter from 2 Corinthians 4. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have the same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. And this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. 
Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. We grieve, but we do not grieve as those who have no hope. Hi, I'm Dawn, I'm Roz's niece. Um, and my verse, my opening verse is your closing verse. I'm gonna go ahead and read it because it, God wants us to hear it twice. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is for but a moment, is working for us a far exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are, are not seen are eternal. My Aunt Roz is in the words of her grandson, Ewan, my favorite kind of person. And I'd like to take a few minutes, try to take a few minutes, to tell you about the impact her life has had on mine. In the last four to five years, Aunt Roz's illness prevented her from doing much of anything except sitting in her bed, listening to her favorite worship music, FaceTiming her grandchildren, reading her Bible, but most importantly, praying. Roz was a prayer warrior. Even in her suffering, with extreme pain, she was thinking of others and how she could lift them up. On many occasions, Roz would call me and say, I was just lying here in bed thinking about you. How can I pray for you? Is there anything you're struggling with? How can I pray for your husband? Yes. And your children? Is there anything specific I can pray for them? I know she did this for many other people. And she didn't just ask, she was praying. Every time these calls would end, I was humbled and wondered how she did it. She was pretty much bedridden, in pain continuously, not able to do normal daily activities, yet she was being obedient to what God had called her to do, pray for others. In the last year when her health really declined, I found, found myself in tears many times thinking what if God was choosing to keep her here in pain and suffering to pray for me or my children? Why would God allow that? But you know what? Roz didn't question God's sovereignty. Even though she was human, and I'm sure at times she questioned God's plan, Roz did not find her situation meaningless. She never said there's no point to this suffering. She believed that even in her suffering, God had a plan and a job for her to do. First Peter 4.19 says, Let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator. This is exactly what Roz did. She knew God was not done with her, and she would be faithful to him till the end. I would love to be more like Aunt Roz, who faithfully loved and prayed for me, who always had an encouraging word and instilled so much wisdom to me. I hope I can be more like her, but I know she would not want that. She would want me to be like Jesus. So I pray that all of us can learn from Aunt Roz's example and be more like Jesus, even in our suffering, until God calls us home. starting to think I should have gone last or first <laughs> so um, my dad often joked that while mom was certainly a sinner and needed grace like the rest of us it always seems like her sins were a lot less than, than ours <laughs> and uh, it was true you know um, it really is you know, with all the tears we've cried this week, it's been easy to celebrate a life that is just so beautifully lived. And I think that's evident from the high school yearbooks and your sister and her niece is saying so far. But 
thinking back to when I was a kid, my mom was always the same person. She was gracious and kind and selfless. She did always seem to put others above herself every time. And she took care of me. I remember her breathing with me with bad asthma attacks when I was a little kid. And then that progressed to her taking care of all my cuts and broken bones. And then eventually it was more relational help where, uh, you know, I'd have problems. She'd give me really wise advice. I'd ignore that advice and then have to admit that I was wrong another couple months later. Um, <laughs> and throughout my life, I kind of took advantage of her patience and her grace, uh, especially in my teenage years. But uh, regardless of how... Um, rebellious I was or my angst, she always welcomed me back and always forgave me. Um, the last couple years are, oof. it's been hard. It's been hard to watch my dad and my mom go through what they went through when we were here and when we were gone. And uh, from the outside, my mom's life was marked by her imprisonment and her pain and her limitations, but throughout her storm, she continued to, uh, her life continued to be defined by her overwhelming joy in her Lord and in those around her. She rarely focused on herself and was constantly interceding for others. And when you spoke to her, you knew that she wasn't thinking about herself. She was caring about whatever your problems were in that moment. So many of us, myself included, are really preoccupied with ourselves and absorbed in how things affect us and wrongs done towards us. And we're constantly concerned with the present situations and worrying about what comes next. And if anybody had caused it for that concern, it was my mom. But instead, she trusted in her Savior and she loved other people. She had no bitterness. She held, had no malice, deceit, pretense. No ulterior motives, no selfish ambition. She loved others more than herself, and she was kind and gracious to all. And that made her absolutely free. I'm going to miss my mom. So, you know, we believe that all creation is a reflection of God and his glory. The diversity around us talks about the beauty of uh, and the beauty in nature talked about is creativity, the water, the earth, and the wind, his power. The love and the care of others speaks of his kindness and grace, and so much good is reflected all around us all the time. And my mom's life was certainly a reflection of that good. She was beautiful, gracious, hilarious. She always laughed at things that I never thought she'd laugh about. Every time I was just a little bit too inappropriate, she would actually laugh, and so just encouraged me to be more so. <laughs> She had a great sense of humor, uh, but she was loving and patient and joyful and kind. But in addition to her life being a reflection of all of those wonderful aspects of our God, she was also reflected. He was also reflected particularly and devastatingly through her suffering and the suffering of other innocent lives. You know, it shines a vivid light on the injustice and the darkness in this world and on the unbearable enemy of death that all of us face. And it puts a spotlight on a truth that a lot of us spend our lives disregarding. I've often wondered why God allows suffering, but if watching someone as sweet and as kind as my mom suffer so horribly for so long, it doesn't point me towards cross Christ. I don't know what it does. My mom's life reflected Jesus, his life, his love, his kindness, his undeserved suffering, and his death on Calvary. It spotlights the most important moment in all of history, where the innocent suffered to defeat death and give us hope. And my mom's life was a beautiful reflection, holy of our creator, and I'm privileged to be her son. And if that were it, that would be enough. But his grace is greater. I see his steadfast love reflected in my dad, who never wavered in his covenant, selflessly serving my mom to the very end. I see his gracious hospitality all my aunts and my family and my cousins and my friends who have unselfishly given their time, many of you here today, and given your time and energy to serve our family over the years. And I see his compare and his compassion and the body of Christ interceding for us over the past few decades. And I'm so thankful for the incredible grace that God has shown towards me and my family through all of you, through his son. I'm thankful that he gave me such an incredible mom 
and I'm thankful that she's now present with her Savior, never again to be broken. May his steadfast love endure forever. After all these years, I would have thought that all my fears were laid to rest. But I still get scared. And I thought that all my struggles would be victories by now. But I confess that the mess is there. But oh, I know the work that you began is coming to an end someday. After all these years. After all this time, I thought the rhythms and the rhymes would come so easy, but it's still so hard. It's the same 12 notes, six strings, and a million little mysteries in one broken heart. But oh, there is an everlasting song I'm gonna sing along someday, cause you never let go. Never let go. You led me by the hand into a land of green and gold. And you never let go. You never let go. Your love endures forever, wherever I go. After all these years, that's all that I know. Castle Rock. Well, I've been longing for a land, but not everyone who wanders is lost. Cause every road I walk is in the palm of your hand. And oh, there is a house with many rooms where I'm gonna be with you someday. Cause you never let go, you never let go. You led me by the hand. by the hand into a land of green and gold and you never let go you never let go well after all the years have gone and I have grown old I'm gonna go home to the arms of a father who never let me go after all these years that's all that I know Please stand with me. Excellent. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. In righteousness, I did not trust the sweetest spring, but holy leaf on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. 
In the darkness veil his lovely face I rest on his unchanging grace In every high and stormy gale My anchor holds with On Christ the solid rock I stand Oh, the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. He who dissolves his covenant in his blood supports me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way. He then is all my hope and say. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all oh, of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. He shall call with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, oh, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand, oh, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground. That's good to it. <laughs> Please stay around after the service. Hang out with us refreshments and that love cake that was mentioned earlier. So we got plenty to share. Um, to close, I just wanted to read another verse that was going on. So it's, it's Jude. 24 and 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever.